Last time on Bugging Out, Bug Farmer Robert Nathan Allen told us how healthy these babies are. And I branded a hornworm with my magic. Now that everyone loves eating bugs, we're going mainstream. And we get the barons take on what the future holds. I'm a full spectrum chef. I'll cook anything you want. So, when I heard eating bugs is the next big thing, I decided to face my fear to discover what it's all about. In a magical kitchen with me, Mosquito, a bearded magic dragon. In Bugging Out with Chef Beanie. In Mosquitoes, the bearded magic dragon's magic kitchen. Cause everyone's doing branded content these days, and so am I. Hey everyone, as insects become a more popular food source in Western cultures, products like these Chirps chips are hitting the market. Now, I made these nachos, which we can call chirp chos. Basically, the sauce is made out of sriracha and Greek yogurt. I put some avocados in there. I roasted some tomatoes. You get the deal, it's nachos. All of that nutrition that you're gonna get in crickets, that's in that little tasty chip right there. If you think me and Mosquito are the only ones who are bugging out, then you weren't at the last New York Eats Bugs event held at the legendary Explorers Club in New York City, where I got some major insight into how insects are hitting the mainstream. Founded in 1904, the Explorers Club is an international, multidisciplinary, professional society dedicated to the advancement of scientific research and the preservation of exploration and a great place to eat bugs. That is a Chapulines taco with an avocado crema just made by they, Chef Mario Hernandez from the Black the Amp. And it's delicious. Why is this so important to you? Well, I think just getting it out there in every way possible helps overcome the taboos that we have. So what I've discovered is kind of the, the hardest bug to eat is the first one. And so when people have it in, you know, in and around their everyday uh, habits, if it's in their kitchen, if they just see it in the stores, they'll eventually become more accustomed to it, they'll try it. I've got a larger version of this, it's about 200 square feet. And so we're producing about 100 pounds per month in there. I think this could be more entertaining and we could make, especially young people, at least pay more attention. You know, there's a more, you know, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Aaron Ambrosia, official culinary ambassador of Bronx, New York, Emmy Award-winning TV personality, president of the Bronx Pipe Smoking Society, and resident member of the Explorers Club. This guy knows alternative protein sources. You know, I, I think that most of the talk of entomophagy has been from a very realistic, scientific standpoint. This is something important, it's great for the environment. But before you can go mainstream, you need to go above that and be exclusive and be sexy. This is the Live-In Farms Hive. It's the world's first tabletop farm to grow edible insects in your home. We freeze them after harvesting them, and those are then boiled and roasted in the oven, and I'm very curious. Mm, well, they smell so delicious already. What do you think? That is amazing. You can put that on salads or even like ice cream or something. Yeah, we yeah. put them into all sorts of stuff. We need to give these insects value. We need to increase their, their stock, so to speak. And because right now they're creepy crawlies. We have to raise them uh, in a way almost to, to, to high cuisine. So here we have three large grasshoppers and interspersed our silkworm pupa, the kind of preserved product from Southeast Asia that people might want if they're ready to go past crickets and mealworms. And of course, they're always gonna be better when they're fresh, but it's time to give these a try. That's pretty good. The first impulse, the first uh, mouthfeel, is that they shatter into just uh, very, very tasty sawdust. Do you guys feel like having a cricket protein bar? So the outside is a uh, chapul. There's two kind of main companies in the cricket protein okay. bar market right now. This is the, the chapul. This is chapul. I think that's the dark chocolate. And then these inside ones are exo. Uh, so this is, I think, their barbecue cricket type of flavor. I'm interested in things like that. I would eat that protein bar. The average person who would eat another protein bar has no reason to do so. 
There's no reason. How do you create the sexiness? That's what I mean. Like, you take you something. Know? Ka Kwong is a perfect example. This is something that is rare, that is ancient. And of course, we say it's for virility. Oh, it gives you potency. It gives you this. You have, I mean, I'm just going to tell you straight up as is. You take that, you take somebody like Jay Z, you team up with him to make the Kak Wong vodka, and you sell for $100 a bottle, and everyone's like, what's that? Well, that's that bug vodka. That's that bug vodka. But it's this sexy thing. Oh, I got that weird buzz from it. It's, 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 it's a placebo. You didn't get shit from it. But because it's in such a sexified element, right. you're having it in this intoxicating environment, it's elevated. Insects as a food source need to be elevated be before they can become ma mainstream. Wow, the Baron is really on point. I mean, with sushi and lobster and stuff like that, that stuff didn't hit the market overnight in the US, but with insect food things like this happening all over the place, it's only a matter of time. There is one company that I'm pretty sure is not gonna have any trouble attracting new customers. Their secret weapon is right here. Next time on Bugging Out, we've got part two going mainstream with Bug. Inside is a miso Greek yogurt um, cricket remains cream. Cricket remains? Yeah. What does that mean?